Ralph Barn Workshop. Today, I'm in desperate need of a brake job on this our family traverse. She's been crunching and grinding. Our mechanic told us we needed a rear brake job. So, we're going to pull this tayo off. <laughs> and we'll see what needs to be done. I bought new uh, stuff already. I got my v somatic over here. I gotta find out what size lug connects these are. pretty worn. They got another sixteenth of an inch on them. All right, what do we got here? Got some big fancy thing. And I know there's a tool you use to squeeze the brake back in. Control arm. Be nice if I hit the right glasses on, wouldn't it? All right, I gotta go find them. All right, so I'm gonna bring you in close so we can kind of investigate what we gotta do here. Um, there's this big thing on the back of the caliper with... Looks like a sensor. That's probably the motor for the parking brake. Yeah, the parking brake is electric. And that motor goes zzz, and it drives out a piston. And I have a tool to retract that. There's your brake line. We don't want to remove that. Um, I would just like to unclip this. So I got a little flexibility here. That must be just a. What kind of connector is that? Oh, yeah, there it is. It plugs in right there. And you can see that this piston here is driven out. That's how the parking brake works. So I'm just going to start loosening crap up until I figure out how to get this part. I got to get this freed up. So I got a little slack here. I guess I can just wire it up. All right, I'm going to get some wire ready for it. And we're going to take the caliper off first. And that's this part. And then I got to get the bracket off so I can get the thing off. Then it all just goes back together. It's not really a hard job to do rear brakes. So I'm zoomed in a little bit too much here. I'm just going to put PB Blaster on all the bolts so I can find. That's got to come. That's going to come. one way down in there. That's it, there should be four bolts. And there's a Torx in here. This brake drum is going away. I'm gonna save it just in case I ever get it. These are probably all metric. So, I'm gonna get my combination impact metric kit here from Harbor Freight, $29. I love this tool kit. 
This toolkit right here covers everything in SAE, American, and metric up to 22 and one inch. So it covers everything from tiny bolts right up through. I'm setting him here so he's rough and ready. I've got my Extendo 3 8 here. i got to figure out how that thing comes out of there. Can I just pry it? Is it just... I think it's just shoved down there like a burr. I'm going to try just prying it. Yeah, see it just shoves over the stub. Alright, well there's one free spot. And that's that there. Let me get a, a punchy or something here. Like I should have a million bucks. I just need something to hang that up so she don't hang on the hoses when doing the rest of the work, that's all. There's really nothing up in here. There's a, a vinyl liner. That'll drop a little bit. That's going to be heavy. Oh, God. Let's see what I can find. Got to be something. I mean, there's wire and stuff around here, too. All right, I'm going to go look for a bungee. All right, I'm back. I found a bungee. Something I can. Oh, that's a plastic sleeve. Great. Something I can run around this control arm and into it. Yeah, we'll see if that works. I got another couple here. We'll find something. So, I don't know, that looks about like a 15. That goes from 14 to 17. That's great. Right. It is a 14. Yeah, this uh, kit from Harbor Freight isn't perfect, but damn near. And these shouldn't be super tight. These are called pin bolts. At least that's what I call them. And those are slider pins that the caliper moves in and out on. And they're short bolts, they're not pins. So the pin bolts are going to stay in there, they're going to be a separate assembly. I've never had this kind of thing apart before, so... Probably just have to pry that SOB. changing everything. I'm changing the rotors and all, so you don't have to be afraid of bending anything here. You should bend. Alright, so there's that. I'm going to hook him there. Hook him on the bolt hole. Maybe. Perfect. See, now we'll pull these pins out and re -loop them. Even though they're very uh, bendy right now, we'll lock uh, bendy. You know, whatever that technical term is. Now we got some bigger nuts in here to deal with. Let me hook on this guy. Uh, of course, he still wants to hug up tight against this. Let me try to get him... And I'm going to have to crank that piston back in. There we go. 
That piston's got to be screwed back in, and I have a special tool kit I got for that. All right. So now we're good. That's a bigger, probably a 17, maybe an 18. Yep, and they don't have an 18, but I have an 18. sticky feeling all the way, so they might have Loctite on them. Still recording? Yes, we are. All right. So now we're just taking that caliper bracket off. Try to get you a better view. These two bolts go in from the back, of course, where there's no access to use the back. It all has to be done via sockets. So we'll take this apart on the bench and clean it up and clean the pins and re-lube them with, with brake grease, which I have. Now that's a nice big beautiful bolt and yes, that has some sort of yellow sealant on it to make it tight. This Extendo 3 8 wrench from Harbor Freight is also a very nice tool. I mean, at first, you know, they used to be just crap, 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 crap tools, but recently, the last few years, they are stepping up their game of quality. All right. So now that guy's got to pry off. What is my priority here? <laughs> here's, here's the pry bar. I've got a big old screwdriver that's been my pry bar for many years. All right, so there's the shoes. Oh yeah, that one's gone. Yeah, no wonder she was scratching and scraping. So I'm going to leave those in just so I can see if... It looks like the inner one has the... Is it the inner one? Yes, the inner one has the squealer on it. And I've got to clean these up and put new... There's probably new sliders in the box. So I'll just remember the inner one has the squealer. All right, well, if you've watched my other videos, you probably saw me uh, build this workbench for this shop because I knew I was going to need a pounding bench to have stuff to work on. So here we are, steel top, two by material. Let's knock these brake shoes out. They are nothing but garbage. I gotta check my brake shoes to see if I got uh, clips that came with them. If so we're gonna wire brush them out, anti seize it, brake grease it. Yes, I got new clips, new shoes. I like AC Delco parts. That's what I use. I don't know what some of this stuff is. You know, I'm pretend to my project. Okay. Now, are these clips all the same? Yes, it's nice. They're all perfectly symmetrical. They're stainless steel. Those are your sliders. And these just pop out of the caliper. They're just wedged in there.
be careful. They probably are a little sharp. You don't want to jab yourself on the end of them and get a jumping keepers. May have been said with other words before. Just gonna pry it out with a screwdriver. Well, they don't look terribly bad. But I have a wire wheel right over here. I'm going to see if I can get that in there. If not, oh, wait a minute. I've got a little wire wheel that fits a drill. Hot chair. And I'm going to put that little dog in there. It's going to rain, and I got the Mustang sitting outside. So I'm just going to turn this up. I like it. I just can't get down in there. Let's see if I got a wire brush that I can get down in there. This one looks like it's wire. Well, there's the little wire one. I'm just gonna clean all the areas where that spring is supposed to set. Perfect. Anti-sleaze. I know I probably should be wearing gloves or something, but I can never just seem to handle anything or work. I'm just going to put this under there to prevent rust. So I'm giving them just, just like painting it. Giving them a nice coat. Of course you don't want this to get into your... I'm not sure where that clips on there, but I think that's fine. Let's see how this sucker fits. Well, it's definitely got to go that away. Because I see the thing on the top. But that just ain't tight. Why ain't it tight? So that's all that was in there. They don't fit tight. If I got that upside down or something. Because that isn't anywhere near what I took out of there. Let's look at what we took out. No. So I must have the wrong friggin' brake shoes. Oh, damn it. All right, well, I gotta go check part numbers. All right. We're back from AutoZone. Let's see if we got the right stuff this time.
You see how I did that? I put the point of the tool down. Hey, look at that. in there tight. Maybe if I just hang it on it. Just bend it. So I'm gonna take him wrap that in there like that. And you can see she's clipped in there. Just an attempt to keep it from rusting and expanding and causing interference. It's raining like a banshee out there now. I had to park the Mustang in the house garage. Now that one already had the tips bent up, so that other one was a little bit malformed. So bending it like I did didn't hurt nothing. It's out supposed to be. All right, and there should be pads with and without squealers. There's a squealer. There's a squealer. Maybe they're all squealers. I don't know. No squealer. Now, where do you want to put your grease? You want to put your grease, your silicone freight grease in there. So let me see if I got some. We'll just take a little bit of that. on the contact areas of the brake shoes here. Pads, whatever I call them. Whatever makes you happy. This says brake parts, so. Right there in that little groove. As soon as you turn the camera off, the zoom goes away. So now, I'm just going to load this up. The outer one gets down. No wonder. It was telling me you're wrong, Bob. There you go. Don't get any silk light on there. I'm going to push them all the way out against the stops on the clips. There's little clips right here. 
will stop them from coming out. And on the inside one, of course, we get our squealer. Why buy AC Delta parts? Dirty, but I'll just clean them off with brake clean. They gotta go in from the inside because they're stops that prevent you. Not a big deal. I just hit him with a little brake clean. Blast off the fingerprints. All right. We've checked the pins. We've lubed. We've anti-seized. We've cleaned the pads. This is ready to go back in. So now we got to work back to the brake. Over now here. we got to get the brake rotor off, and I need a Torx, and that's usually a 30 Torx to take the boot out, which has been the same in all my other traverses. There's one bolt in here. I do that. No great loss.
Padres, I am going to give that a quick. Paint job. Good old Rust-Oleum. Factory rebuilt here. I'm just going to hit the breaker over on the floor here. A little brake clean. Get any oil off it. because we don't have that screw. I don't think I can get that out. Maybe with vice grips. Let's try vice grips just once. All right, we're moving right along here. I got the power connector out. I had to break the stupid red clip. I couldn't figure out how to get it apart. Now I've got my driver tool in here. And I just grease that up with some PB Blaster so that I don't ruin my gasket. And this looks like it's going to take a bunch of turning. But it is going back in. And it's pushing the caliper back into the piston. So I, my tool is working. I saw another guy who actually took the electric motor off and it's starting to get easier of course we're pushing uh, juice back into the master cylinder too So the tool is helpful. This is the right hand side. It says R8 on it. And we're almost back in. I don't sure how far in it goes. It must go all the way. All right, we're bottomed out. So now this guy loosens up by screwing in. And there we go, our piston is fully retracted. All right, well that was cool, now that I figured out how it works. I'm gonna use this tool again, but next time, I have to use the left hand wrench. And on the other side. So it looked like plate number K2 was the one that worked for this. There might have been other ones that worked, but that one seemed to work just fine. All right, now we just reassemble like a normal brake rotor. So I put my disc back on here. No need for any grease in there. That seemed totally good. And the bracket goes on right here. I got some glue on there. I got to get off. I don't want dirt on my brake shoes. 
brake shoes in here look perfectly clean. Alright, I'm going to anti-freeze these. I know they usually have, um, they usually have sealant on them, but I'm going to put sleeves on them. I've got my loaded caliper bracket. And the uh, um, the uh, tire being bolted on the wheel is actually what holds the brake um, in there anyway. I've just got to remember to plug my parking brake in, but I never use it. Get that snug, and then I'll do the other one. I'm sure there's a spec on this for torque. I'm going to put them on tight. Remember, when you get back in your car, you've got to pump the brakes and get those uh, pistons to extend out. Set this guy free. All right. And see, so he just sits. Squeeze them in. He slides right over. Push the pins in a little bit. Come together. There we go. Oh, he's way up here on this. I'm on the wrong thing. There we go. There we go. I just hit around the wrong. Thing, thing you do here. There's one end. This is very scientific, don't you know? There's the second one started. All right. I'm gonna plug in my connector down here. Now, yeah, I didn't use the latch, but they latch anyway. There's like a latch lock. It's not going anywhere. This thing slides back over there. We're all back together. If that starts turning, you'll have to hold it with an open end wrench. All right, that's tight. It's very scientific. You know, back in the day when I was working on cars and never had a torque wrench, I just tightened what I thought was necessary. And that looks like it. All right. The rear brake is done on this side. I'm going to wipe my hands off a little bit here and put the wheel back on. And we'll move to the other side. All right. Actually, these wheels are lighter than some of the big steel ones I've worked with. And you never put any kind of 
And I see on your studs, at least that's what the mechanics tell me. Well, all right, we got the job finished. You can see the shiny new rotors in there. Um, this side was a little bit harder to get the electric motor to retract and, and, and bring the caliper piston back. We ended up using this kit that I bought and it worked. I bent the handles because I put open end wrenches on there to give me more leverage. One thing I might have screwed up, we were using the right hand one on the passenger side. I started out with the left-handed one on the driver's side and it seemed to jam up so I switched back to the right hand. But what we had to do is keep turning this along with the handle to keep too much tension off because otherwise it would just jam against itself and you couldn't turn it and that's when I was bending the handles. So. If you baby that in, make sure you leave a little slack between this nut, this plate, your disc, and the piston, just a little, so that you can turn it. And if it jams, try turning that lock nut part 
out a little bit and releasing the chant tension. But I got these back on and torqued. And uh, yeah, the brake rotors were, the shoes were down to the rivets and the rotors are full of trenches. So I probably won't be able to save them anyway if I wanted to. But as I said, I save them for junk. And hey, look what might be coming up later this summer. There's a couple of small engines in there. There's a Robin, which I think is a Subaru. And I think the other one is a Tecumseh. And uh, it's missing its pull cord thing, but they could be replaced. I might build like a double engine something. I don't know. Uh, we'll try it. All right. Take care. God bless. That is it for changing the rear brakes and rotors and pads on a Traverse, the newest generation. Thanks for watching, guys. God bless. Take care. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Enjoy the summer weather that's coming on us. Memorial Day weekend is just a couple days away. All right, all right. Hey, what fun would it be if we didn't take a road test? I've got the lift pulled back. I've got to pump the pedal a few times. Get the brakes to fill up the cylinders. Don't forget to do that after a brake job. You uh, get in the car the first time and the pedal goes all the way to the floor. It kind of raises the hair on the back of your necks. All right. Should I hit the parking brake and try that? I don't care. I don't want it to jam up. All right, so you can see me backing out here. Both sides are clear. There's my wife. I don't want to run over her. I didn't know she was back there. I didn't know you were back here. Smile. I had to pump it twice or three times. You want to go? Might as well die together, right? You can film! All right, guys and gals. Let's go for a little ride, check out our brake jobs. Those rotors were grooved. I mean, grooved. Oh, look, that there is an RV. That's a nice size. I would like to have one that size. I wouldn't want any bigger. All right, through the neighborhood here. She does stop. All right. Are you having fun yet? sunny day. You guys have probably seen this route in Astro Van test drives. Look twice before you go. Wheels ain't falling off or nothing. Let me raise it up so it's not right in the sunshine under the lens. Yeah, the sun's right in the lens. That's 55 over smooth as silk. We've got Falcon tires on it. They're getting pretty well worn, but we rotate them. So we're trying to get as much mileage out of it as we can. I'm not sure exactly what miles we were at when we changed them. I don't know if we're going to need to... I don't know. I guess we'll push through the winter with them because we've got four-wheel drive. But Scenery, scenery, farm country, western New York. They're plowing all the fields. It's just a few days from Memorial Day. You probably won't see this until after. But yeah, you got to use that tool. I've seen different ways you can do those uh, brakes. The tool that I showed you that rotates it back in with many, many, many turns because it's a fine thread. But there's also 
another guy showed actually, of course, you disconnect the motor, and he took the two Allen wrenches out of it and went in and screwed the, the push rod or whatever back out through the spline shaft in the back and then put the motor back on and then pushed the piston in like you normally would with a C-clamp. Did it work? I guess it did. I didn't want to take that all apart. The tool that I bought worked. It was just me and my lovely wife here helped hold it with a, a pry bar so that I have leverage after I bend a few tools. I'm going to do a UE right here. Oh yeah, she ain't doing nothing. Shaking and shimmying now. Look at that nice garage. That's a beauty. Whoa! I'll tell you.